You're not gonna believe this, guys. I just pulled out a 3100 Ryzen 3 CPU out of a packet of M&Ms. It looks like there's something else in here, hold on. No way, I just pulled out another CPU, an AMD Ryzen 5 1600 AF out of this packet of M&Ms. So you're probably sitting there going, Brian, that is just not possible. Come on, there's no way M&Ms would sell two Ryzen CPUs in a $2 packet of chocolate that they put on supermarket shelves. And you'd be right. But speaking of what's possible and what's not, what if I told you that it's possible that a four core eight threaded Ryzen CPU could beat a six core 12 threaded Ryzen CPU and they cost around the same money? You're probably thinking, no way. Well, there's only one way to find out in today's review of the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X. Both these CPUs are coming in at $99 and $120 respectively. If you're down under in Australia, it's gonna set you back $169 and 205 Aussie dollars for that 3300X. With that aside, let's roll the intro and then get straight in to those juicy benchmarks. So coming out of those gaming benchmarks, and we're gonna talk about gaming a lot here in today's video, because it's the main focus I feel for a lot of people at this price point, especially looking for this many cores and threads. And on the test bench, we had on the AMD side of things, the X570 Phantom Gaming X from ASRock, and that was coupled with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair Platinum Pro RGB memory. Now on most of these CPUs here, pretty much all the CPUs, but the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, I could clock that to 3600 megahertz, no problems, using those XMP profiles. The Ryzen 5 1600 AF I had here only went up to 3066 megahertz, which in ways would be limiting its results a little bit versus the other DDR4 contenders here. But that being said, 3300X in the games, when we moved on with the titles here, we could see on average it was roughly about 10% faster than the 3100. And this mainly had to do with the clock speeds out of the box. This thing went over 4.2 gigahertz in games on all those four cores, eight threads. Even in the single core threads and things like Cinebench, it was going over 4.3 gigahertz. On the other side of the fence, however, the 3100, that's limited to 3.9 gigahertz, at least from my tests here, on both the single core and the multi-core. So if you're keen on manually overclocking this thing, which we'll do a video on very soon, then you can get more performance, especially out of the 3100 versus the 3300X. But the good thing about both these CPUs and even the Ryzen 5 1600 AF is when we look at the power consumption figures, they come in with very low power consumption, even whilst maximum stress tests are being run. And so this allows these three CPUs to be coupled with a very cheap A320 motherboard and you can use the included stock race stealth cooler absolutely fine to extract the most value for money. But back to the gaming benchmarks, we're using for the graphics card, the 5700 XT Taichi from ASRock. This thing's overclocked out of the box. It's an absolute beast. And so the differences in performance here would be even less if you're dropping it down to a 1660 Super, 1650 Super, or say an RX 580 or a 5600 XT. But on that note, I decided not to test it with a 2080 Ti because I feel like that's an unrealistic scenario where someone's gonna go out and buy a $100 CPU and couple it with a $1,000 GPU. However, coupling a $100 CPU with say a $400 GPU is quite a realistic scenario. And what we saw here with the 3300X in particular was that it was running extremely well even versus the 3950X and the 9900KS. In a lot of games, it wasn't that far behind, and all we had to do to get this performance out of this thing was lock in XMP profiles. 
So if overclocking is one of those things that you don't want to do, and honestly, from all my experiences with PC gamers, I'd say about 95% of people don't overclock their gaming PCs. So if you're one of those people, then the 3300X, I feel for an extra 20 bucks over the 3100 is going to be money well spent, especially in the grand scheme of things. That is, you're buying a motherboard, RAM, SSD, case, power supply, GPU, and you're putting it all together. That extra $20 spent is definitely going to net you your money's worth in terms of the total build cost. So what about the Ryzen 5 1600 AF? Very popular pick. However, one thing I've said about this before in the past is that it's not available everywhere. A lot of people tell me they can't get access to this CPU, and even sometimes when it's on sale for 85 bucks, it sells out very quickly, where it quickly goes up to $100 again. However, as we saw in these benchmarks here, the 3100 is going to do a bit better of a job at gaming than the 1600 AF, which is pretty much identical to the 2600 out of the box, which is what we're showing in today's graphs. So basically, if all you're doing is gaming, then these two new four cores from AMD are going to do a great job. However, there is that anomaly in the graphs. You're probably looking at that i7-4770 and scratching your head saying, why is this included in the graphs? And the main reason I've included this is because it's such a popular CPU on the used market. It's so much more popular, in fact, that people would buy this CPU when they see that i7 and they'd rather buy it over the likes of an i5-9400F. And that's what's left me scratching my head. When I resell PCs, if it has an i7 in the title, people go bananas for it. And this is a true story. A lot of people who sell PCs will tell you the same thing. So I am a little bit worried for the new i3 that's gonna hit the market, but don't tell Intel that. But when I sat down and looked at those 4770 numbers, I was actually quite surprised. The fact that I coupled this with an OEM Lenovo board, which I know a lot of people are doing out there, they're either doing Acer Veritons or HPs, uh, fourth gen OEM boards, using an adapter, using some budget 1600 megahertz DDR3 uh, CL11 memory in dual channel, this was actually performing quite well. And this is why I guess these older i7s are still popular. They still carry that AVX2 instruction set and they still do a really good job, especially if you can pick up the motherboard, the cooler, the CPU and the RAM all in one for a hundred bucks. You're still absolutely laughing for value for money and that's nothing to laugh about. So when it comes to used price performance, that's extremely relevant still. When it comes to four cores, eight threads, extremely relevant. But of course you can go out there and cherry pick a game like maybe Ashes of the Singularity or some game that nobody plays and use it as a basis to argue more cores, more threads is needed. But when it comes down to testing games that people actually play, the 3300X definitely surprised me. Then moving over to the productivity numbers, this is the second side of today's video, the second story to tell. We can see that moving through V-Ray, Cinebench, Geekbench 5.1, 7-Zip, and also the name that I'm not going to mention because I don't want to get demonetized, it's easy to see that more cores, more threads is definitely going to pack more of a punch here than it did in the gaming side of things. So this is where the Ryzen 5 1600 AF becomes more of a viable solution. Though in my experience, the answer to this one is very simple. And that is, you as the individual, what are you spending most of your time on the computer doing? If you're doing productivity work and you're on a budget, then you may wish to go out and get the Ryzen 5 1600 over these four cores. But if you're on your computer most of the time playing games, you're gonna benefit more on the gaming side by getting a Ryzen 3. So there's the balance. You've just gotta choose which side you wanna linger on. Though you may have noticed in these productivity benchmarks that I didn't include video editing. That's because there is a CPU out there at the moment. If you are serious about video editing on a budget, then you'll definitely wanna check out the V3 Xeons going on AliExpress at the moment. There's 12 cores, 24 threads, going for a little over 100 bucks. That's some extremely good value for money, especially with the fact that you can get very cheap DDR3 ECC register memory. Though I'll just put the link to that video up here if you wanna go down that alley. Though when it all comes down to it, just like this packet of M&Ms right here, value for money on the lower end side of things is getting extremely good. And you're probably thinking, what's a packet of M&Ms got to do with value for money? Well, when I went down to the supermarket before, the pack of M&Ms was on special. So <laughs> that's what it's all about. In 2020, getting a bargain, getting a deal. These CPUs coming in 
at $100 US and then $120 for the Ryzen 3 3300X, you are getting a really good value for money CPU, even if you buy it at these retail prices. Now imagine on sales, whether it's on eBay or Amazon, you'll even be able to get these four cores cheaper. And of course, couple them with a budget A320 motherboard, get some cheap 3200 megahertz or even 3000 megahertz memory, and you're gonna have a really good time with the likes of a budget GPU. But also when we look at other CPUs at this price point, it's just bringing so many good choices to the CPU scene at $100 in 2020. And that will tell you one thing, and that is there's a massive demand for a CPU for a hundred bucks. And when there's a lot of demand there, there's gonna be a lot of supply. So it is awesome to see new additions like this, but I will tell you one thing before I get on out of here, I do miss the Ryzen 5 3500X. If that was still available for 110 bucks, that would still be my number one pick for gamers in 2020. And with that aside, let us know in the comment section below what you think of these new four core eight threaded CPUs. Are you in the market for one of these four cores? If so, why? If not, why not? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And we've got the question of the day here, which comes from Utkar Sharma. And they ask, can you make a video of two 2080 Ti's versus a single RTX Titan? No. Hope that answers that question. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see the videos the moment they drop, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. So coming out of those benchmarks, what we could see straight away was that the rumors were true. AMD is indeed doing a different thing to the 3300X than they're doing to the 3100. And that is that the 3300X has four cores on a single CCX module as opposed to the 3100, which has two cores spread across.